isn't always fair. So I think I'm going to kind of run and kind of go over them a little bit, and I'm going to kind of explain them in a, in a way that we can get a little better understanding of how the gifts are and how they work. First of all, the little Lord in prayer. Father, we come to you in the precious name of Jesus. And we thank you for the time that we can come into your house and lift you up. For the Lord, you said if we lift you up higher, we'll, you'll, you'll draw all the men under the hands. Father, we're lifting you up high tonight, Lord. And we, we just give you the praise and the glory for it all. And Father, for what I speak tonight, Lord, let the Holy Spirit have its way. And, and let the people open their ears to hear and understand you and their hearts to receive what you have in your word tonight. And I give you the praise and the glory for it all in the name of Jesus. Amen. If you want to turn to the 12th chapter of 1 Corinthians, I've been reading over this for the last couple days. And the more I read it, the more of a better understanding I, I get, which I thought I knew everything that it was anyhow, but I, we don't. We can read one verse of the Bible and read that verse the next week and it's an entirely different meaning, and then read it on again to mean something else. It's, it's the word, how it speaks to us and speaks to our hearts. The Holy Spirit speaks to us in all different ways. And I want to give you the, Paul's talk, Paul talk, uh, talks about this in, in Corinthians. You know, Paul was, was, was not one of the disciples that walked with Jesus. He came along afterwards on the road to Damascus, you know, when he came into the view. But you know, he wrote 13 books of the Bible, more than any other prophet or, 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 or Matthew, Mark, Luke, <laughs> He wrote, he wrote most of the books, 13. There are some scholars say that there was four that he didn't write, but if you read the books, those 13 books, you'll find out there's a similarity in the writing and, and on how he, he brings forth the, the message in his So it kind of relates to Paul wrote, Paul wrote the books. In the 12th chapter, the first verse, we're talking about the spiritual gifts. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, this has to do with the nine gifts he's talking about. I'm going to explain it to you, the nine gifts. This is him telling the story. I would not have you all ignorant. Paul's saying this because he wanted the entirety of the church to know, to understand. It wasn't just the one or two individuals. He was talking to the church. You know that you were you were Gentiles, meaning the Gentiles back then in them days, they were they they did not serve God. They were they were they were into uh, supernatural things and, and witchcraft. And their beliefs was not, not what Paul was talking about. But you know you were Gentiles, carried away into these dumb idols, they were worship idols, even as you were led. Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaketh by the Spirit of God calls Jesus a curse. No man. The Spirit would never do such a thing. And that no man could say Jesus is Lord, but by the Holy Spirit. Any other name will be incorrect. It is the Holy Spirit alone who reveals the Lordship of Christ to the believer. That's how we learn and understand. We get fed by the Holy, Holy Spirit feeds us. That is what lives inside of us, nurtures us, builds us up, and enables us to go out and, and, and do the, the work that he intended us to do. In the fourth verse, the Bible says, that there were diversities of the gift. In other words, different types. Diversity being different types. Now there were different types of the gift, but the same spirit. And there are differences of administrations. In other words, different uh, different services, ministries, and offices. So, but the same spirit, but same Lord. Six verses, and there are diversities of operations, and how they work. The operations of how the Holy Spirit works. But it is the same God which worketh in all. As reference to the fruit of the God, yeah, fruit fact that God is the Father who energizes all things in all ways. That's in his way all things are perfect. So we have to understand that Paul's talking about. In the seventh verse, Paul says, But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For there is one, there is given once in one by the Spirit. For the one he is given by the Spirit proclaims that the Holy Spirit is being the one who carries out the instructions of Christ, what he did. First of all, he gives the word of wisdom. 
pertains to information concerning the future, whether people, places, or things. The word of wisdom. Remember that if we reflect to, to the future things pertaining to the people, places, and things. And to another, the word of knowledge. The word of knowledge contains to the past, present, and really relates to the person, places, and things. It talks about the past, the present, the word of knowledge. But the same spirit. There's no different spirit. The same spirit gives these, these gifts. To another, faith. Now when it says, Paul talks about to another faith, he's talking about a special kind of faith. I mean, we all can have faith that if somebody's car was dead out there and had a pair of jumper cables, you just, and you went out there, you knew that it was going to start, you had faith when that was going to start, right? But Paul's talking about the faith. Remember the woman that's with the issue of blood. She reached out, she, she just said, if I touch the hem of this camera, that's the kind of faith what Paul is talking about here. Amen. To another, the gifts of healing. Now we had some pray this morning for people that they needed prayer. But the pastor also talked about this morning that it's, it's we all have that gift of healing by praying for those who are sick. And not bragging on self, but I found out many, many times that when I was down, I prayed for somebody else. And the Lord not only takes care of that person, he, he took care of me also. Yeah. While I laid on my back just a few weeks, so I've been now on my back, I laid there in bed, not just praying to the Lord to hey, touch me, Lord. I touched the people that I that I named in the church. And I can name you all. So I had I you know I, I not to brag, just to say pray one for another. Even though you don't know what's wrong, or you, you don't have any idea what's wrong, pray, pray, because that is one of the one of the gifts. The gifts of healing. It's prayer. By that same spirit, this is all given. And to another, the working of miracles. Extra extraordinary things, miracles, things that we don't expect, those kind of miracles. To another, prophecy. This is for the edification, exhortation, and the comfort. This has nothing to do with the office of the prophets, okay? This is to give the prophecy. And to another, discerning the spirits, whether they are from man or the, or, or the, or the devil or, God, or, or from God. We have to know. Which, which spirit's talking to us? And the only way we can understand what the Word, the word of God is, if the Spirit's talking to us, we got to be in His Word. we got to be in His Word. If we're not in His Word, there's a lot of spirits can be out there that can be talking to you, and you're thinking it's coming from God, but it's not. We have to be really be careful. So He gives the work in the miracles, the prophecy, and He gives it to another discerning of spirits, and to another diverse kinds of tongues. In other words, tongues that need to be interpreted. Diverse kinds. And to another, the interpretation of tongues. These are the nine gifts that Paul is trying to he's talking. He's talk, talking to the church, wanting the church to know what these gifts are. They're not just for, for just one or two of us. And, and I can't give you a gift, and you can't take a gift from me and take it and go on. Only the Holy Spirit can give to each one he desires to give this, these gifts. And can anybody have all of the gifts? Yes, you can have all of the gifts. You can have all the gifts. Which gift do you which gift do you really want? What gift do you want to use? You use the gifts in the time that the gifts needed. Whatever it is that somebody needs something, you can use the gift. Word of knowledge. If you know something that's for somebody else and they need you need the word, as long as it pertains to the word, you have that gift to help that person along the way. So the nine gifts, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, faith, healing, miracles, prophecy, discerning of spirits, and all kinds of diverse kind of tongues, and another the interpretation of tongues. I was listening to a, a program, my dear Jimmy Swagger. I love a lot of his music, so I listen to him in the mornings. And somebody in the church gave a message. But there was no interpretation. And uh, they just went on. And, you know, they didn't, they didn't go on or didn't explain. But if somebody gives a message in tongues in, in the church and there is no interpretation, 
then the person who gave the tongue should, should give the interpretation of it. Otherwise, give it, give it as a prophecy, or a word of knowledge. But there's a lot of people giving them, giving the gifts of, gifts of speaking in tongue, but there's no interpretations. I felt bad that uh, when I first became a Christian that I went into a church that I thought that's where the Lord wanted me. <laughs> I was just a new Christian, and the second week I was there, I was already made Sunday school uh, to pretend it. Now, you know, that's really getting pushed forward fast. But I also gave the interpretation of tongues. And I know it was from God because then every time the, uh, these people would speak, it's like I'm hearing them in English. But they're speaking in another language. One time a little lady gave interpretation and I sat there in the back and I said, Lord, I'm not going to do it. Let somebody else do it. I'm the only one doing it. So let somebody else give the interpretation of tongues. You know, we can get serious trouble. We can get serious trouble if we don't do what God, what God wants us to do. So I sat on that. I sat on that. I didn't make the mark. And then finally, after about five minutes passed, pastor's pleading for people. To, he said, he looked back at me and says, Anderson, you have interpretation? I said, yes. He said, I chastise you in the name of Jesus. He said, get up and give that interpretation. I got up and gave the interpretation. And it was a particular way it pertained to the message that he was given that day. But I was also told that if a, a message is given, if it's truly given from God, that the one who's leading should give the interpretation if, that is, if no one else does. And that is a, that is, that's scriptural, I believe it is. So if we're all filled with the Holy Ghost, and have these gifts in us, which we all can have, we should be able to turn to one another. If someone gives a message in tongues, we should be able to interpret that message. As simple as ABC. It might come in a different E and F G, but we, we, we know what to say. It says ABC. We have to speak out what God wants us to speak. And I know the gifts aren't used here in the church. The speaking in tongues part is not used in here much, but I know it's coming. I know each and every one of us are going. As a time, as the clock's ticking down, the Holy Spirit is going to be making some heavy moves in this church. Amen. I really do believe. Amen. I've had a vision of this church, and I've had, and I and I, and I see it coming. I see it coming. I, I I talked about it today. I said, Lord, what about that vision that I've had? And, I, and the only message I got back is, keep believing, it's coming. So we're going to have miracles. We're going to have miracles in this church. We're going to have messages in this church. We're going to have the word of knowledge. We're going to have the gifts being used in the operate in in the proper order that God intended us to have. And that's why when I read over this chapter, this 12th chapter, I said, well, the Lord says, let's get going. And let's get going. Talk to the people and ask them to pray about it. Pray about seek all these things. In the 11th verse, it says, But all the works, <clears throat> all the work that one and the self, the same spirit, dividing every man separately as he will. The Holy Spirit cannot, you know, we cannot impart gifts from us to give to somebody else. It has to be all done by the Holy Spirit. I had a woman come up to me one time. Oh, I want. Can you give me that gift of healing? Can you give me that gift because I can have a gift? I can pray for you for having a gift, but I can't give you it. You have to give that. That has to be done with the Holy Spirit. That's the only one that can give you the gift. So, the, so, but all these works that one himself is done by the same Spirit, divided every man separately, separately as he will. Now, in the twelfth verse, it says, "For as the body." Now, now Paul's talking about the body. He's talking to the. Corinthians here. And for as the body, we're the body. Every one of us is a body. It's the body of Christ. So he's talking to the body. About, for as the body is one and has many members, which we are many members, not as many as we ought to have, but we have many members here. All members of one body, being made, many are one body, referring to the church. So also is Christ. For by one spirit, and we all baptize into one body. We're all baptized into one body. Whether we be Jew or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free. And have all made to drink into one spirit. The Holy Spirit is the agent who affects the work and the redemption carried out in our lives, which is made possible 
by death, burial, and resurrection, which we all went through, we all went through when, when we have we accepted Jesus Christ as our Savior. We went through his death, his burial, and his resurrection. We got saved. We died in our old ways. We got saved. We rose. We became new creatures in God. That's why it says, Behold, the old things are passed away. All things come new. We become new. And we're all When, we, when the Lord comes and takes us home, we're all going to experience a, a death to life chance of a transformation. And that's you know, I'm looking forward for that day. For the body, in the 14th verse, the human body, is not one many, but many members. If the foot says, because I'm not a hand and I'm not the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, I'm not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? Or in other words, if the whole were hearing, then where would the smelling be? For the human body is, 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 is a whole and has many different members. Same way as a church. We are, we are a body of Christ. And we have many members. And we all have special gifts, the kinds of gifts. We all have, we all have the, the discerning of spirits, the average kind of tongues. We all should have the word of wisdom. And we all should have the healing just by praying one for another. Everybody doesn't have to be anointed by oil or have their hands laid on by a preacher or, or a presbyterian or whatever you want to call them in the church just by prayer for, for healing. But now God has many, uh, many, I mean, God, excuse me, 18th birth. But now God set the members, every one of them, in the body as it pleased him. Not as it pleased us, as it pleased him. And if there were all one member, where were the where was the body? We had many parts. But now, as there were many members, yet did one body. And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of you. Nor again, the head to the feet, I have no need of you. We need every part of our, even though we're one body, we need all the parts that make up the body. And that's our church. We have, the, we have the church. The building, this is just a building. This is a building. The church, we are the church. And we are one body. And we have many members. Like I said before, if my vision comes through, we're going to have many members. And I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to that. But if the Lord comes before that, I, I, I'll accept that. I'll accept that. Uh, where did I leave off? 21st verse? 20th verse. But now are there many members, yet but one body. And the eye cannot say unto the other hand, I have need of you. Nor again the head, the feet, I have no need of you. No such, no, no, much more those members of the body, which seem to be more feeble and necessary, all play an important part. Without, well, we'd be in a mess. <laughs> If we, didn't, if we didn't have part of our body, we, we didn't have hands or arms, we couldn't pick nothing up. I think of uh, Eddie Spaghetti. But he gets, you know, he does, he does uh, different things in other ways, but we all have, all have the, all these members that we have to our body makes up the body. And of those members of the body which think to be less honorable, upon these were bestowed more abundant honor. It's probably speaking of the eternal organs here. And our un un uncommonly parts have no un abundant commonness in reference to the covering of the dress and stuff like that. So we, our bodies are got to be covered. For our commonly parts have no need. But God has tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to the part which is which lack. The part that lacks is in our body, if we're not saved, is the Holy Spirit. With the body being with the Holy Spirit living in us, when we become Christians, our bodies become what God what, what God intended our bodies to be. Without Him, we're, we're not a full, complete body. Without the Holy Spirit, we're not Christ. We're not the complete body of Christ. Amen. For comedy of the parts have no need, but God tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to the part which lack, that there should be no 
excuse me, in the body, referring to the the distinction of, of the this, this dissolution, excuse me, the dissolution of the, or the disposition, but that the members should have the same care one for another, referring to the fact that all should be treated alike. Now, in the old, old in the days of uh, the old days of the Bible, when Paul was was preaching, everybody lived a common life. The Christians lived; they were all common, they were just common. Everybody had about the same thing, one for another, you know. So it wasn't wasn't anything different, and they were they were more and more body than any of them. Today we have many different things, you know. And whether one member suffered, all members suffer with it. If there's somebody in this church that's suffering from something, then we should take up, take that person's burden upon us to suffer with them. If one if one if one weeps, we should weep. When, you know, if one cries, we should cry. Or we, should, uh, we should have empathy towards the, yeah. to the ones who are one body. We, should, we need to be join ourselves together, bring a closer relationship between us and God, the Holy Spirit. And whether one member suffer, all members all suffer with it. It, it, it pertains to the way it should be. Or one member be honored, all the members rejoice. Say if somebody coming in, and I uh, use, use a lotto as a, as, a, as a thing, I shouldn't, but I don't play it. But anyway, if somebody won the lotto, they come to a lot of money, and they come in, and if they're a really good Christian, you know, we should rejoice that they did it, that they got it, you know. Even though it might not be right, I don't know. I, that I don't know. But it, that's between me, me, you and God. If somebody played a lotto, I don't know. I, I don't, personally, me, I can't, I can't see it. My wife and I used to, when she was alive, we used to go to Las Vegas all the time. And, and, uh, and the more I went, the more convicted I got. And, and I finally got to the point that we're, in the last few years, before, after I became a Christian, and I said, you know, I said, I can't do this. I can't do this. I can't serve two gods. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't get, if I can't give my money to God, why should I give it to somebody else? If I, have, if, I, if I have a lot of money, God gets more money. That's as simple as that. If I, if I don't, if the more you got, the more you give. And I, I believe that very spiritually. So, let's remember, when one is honored, we'll be rejoiced with it. Now, now, you and the body of Christ, and members in particular, as God has set some in the church, for first apostles, secondary prophets, Teachers, thirdly, teachers, the miracles, the after the miracles, then gifts of healing, helps, oh, helps, as a gift. It springs off the nine, one of the nine gifts, but it, it, it's, it's a help. If somebody's in need, we help. Something we see in the church that needs to be taken care of, we help. I'm going to tell you right now, I've been out five weeks, six weeks, two, two months now, Pastor, I believe it, from doing the food ministry, and I, and, I, and I miss it. I miss it. I can't wait to get back into it, because that's my way of saying it. That's help. That's help. That's one of the gifts I, I like to have, help, to help somebody else when they need something. And then we talked again about the, te the teachers, after the miracles, teachers, those who explain the word. Those are the teachers. That's what I'm trying to do tonight, explain some of the word about the gifts of the Holy Spirit and what they do. After, the, after that, miracles, the gift of healing, helps, again. Governments, oh, where's it? Diversities, or diversities, and tongues. Are all apostles? No. Are all prophets? No. Are all teachers? No. Are all workers of miracles? No. Have all the gifts of healing? No. Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? We don't all, but we could. Seek the Holy Spirit. All these things, that all of these before, to be teachers. 
prophets. We, we, we can be witnesses out there in the world. What is a prophet? A prophet is someone that goes forth and spreads forth the word, right? We can be prophets. The term uh, using it today, it might be not so, but we're witnesses. We're, we're, we are what Christ wants us to be. We are his, we are his examples. You know, when we accept Jesus Christ as our Savior, we become servants, as Paul. Paul became a great servant, a serving God. And servant means to be slave, slave to his word, slave to do his work. We're his slave, we're his servants. Have all the gifts of healing, do all speak with tongues, 30th verse. Do all interpret? Again, the answer is no. Well, they all don't. But some do. But come convert earnestly to the best gift. And yet, show I unto you a more excellent way. Paul's talking about what is, it, what is the, 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 the way he's talking about here. The best gift that we can have. Love. Pastor talked about that this morning. Love. Love one another as a self as yourself. With that great gift, each one of us here tonight can do all, all the, we can do all these miracles, all these gifts, if we, if, if we earnestly seek after that agape love. Okay. There's a love that, you know, I love things, and I love everybody here in the church, but I, I want that agape love. And that is, that's a love that where you would better lay down your life for one another. Another would be be earnestly bond to them and, and to the help them. That, that's the kind of love that we need today. As Paul says in the 13th chapters, though I speak with the tongues of men and of, and of angels, and he goes on and says, and down and further on it says, if we don't have the charity, which is love, in the, in the fourth verse on it, and, and, and suffer long, and is kind, and is charity, love, the kind of love that God has, envy is not, bonds not itself, Never is a rag. It is not puffed up. It is not prideful. Does not does not believe itself unseemly. Speaking not to your own, it's nearly uh, easily provoked, and it thinks no evil. Evil. Love. I think that's one of the greatest gifts of, of all. Of them, the gift of love. But Paul says, now concerning special gifts, brethren. I, want, I do not want you to have, be ignorant of all these gifts. God wants us to have these If he didn't want us to have these gifts, he wouldn't put them in the book. Amen. If he did not want them to have it. I had a person ask me one time, he said, Larry, what gift do you have in the Bible? I said, whatever is needed at the time. Somebody's sick, pray for the sick to be well. Not bragging on self again, but after I was saved and I got into the Word and became a minister in Alexis. I, I prayed for somebody that was in the, that was a paraplegic. Now you know what a paraplegic is? And I prayed I had only been on the phone for about five minutes with this person. And all of a sudden I could hear screaming and yelling in the background. And then someone else grabbed the phone. I said, hey I said, what's going on in there? She says, my mother is getting out of the wheelchair. I wasn't there to see it. I just go by what they said. And then, she, and, the, and then a little bit later, she got on the phone with me and she said, I'm healed, I'm healed, I'm healed. And all, all I could do was, thank you, Jesus. All I could do was weep because I knew, oh, hey, that was God. That wasn't me. That was God. And no matter, we could do that with somebody else. Somebody else is feeling that we give them a kind word, a word of encouragement, a word of love, let them know that they're loved. That, that, that basically builds them up inside and the, 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 the enzymes in your body start kicking off the healing power going through your body, which I believe is by the Holy Spirit. And we get healed that way. There's all kinds of ways to be healed, and I, and, but it's all through God, through the same Spirit. You just gotta remember that. There's many different kinds of tongues. How many languages are there in the world? 26,000 languages or something? Someone else said it at one time? How many have 26,000 different languages? Not bragging on self, but I prayed in Chinese, Japanese, Korea, 
Australian, or whatever, but the Lord, you know, Indian. Matter of fact, Indian was the first language I knew, well, first of the language when I was baptized in the Holy Spirit. I'm driving home in a car, and I heard this Indian talking, speaking, and I said, what in the world? I checked my radio, and it was on, but I reached over and turned the volume up. No, that's not it. I turned the volume back on, and all of a sudden the Indian started talking again. I said, where is this coming from? And not, you know, because I was consciously driving. I knew what I was, you know, watching what I was doing. Finally, I looked up in the mirror, and I heard this voice in the mirror. I'm looking in the mirror, and it's my mouth going. So, yeah, I always look at it as if Indian was the first word, <laughs> the first, first tongue the Lord gave me. And then another another time, you know, and another thing, if you're praying in the Spirit and somebody hears you praying in the Spirit with God, this actually does happen, it's truth. My wife, when, she, when I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I would pray in the Spirit until I go to bed at night. When I got done praying, my prayer always ended on a high, on a high. I would pray and then in the, in the tongue, and then, on, and then the last thing I'd say was on a high. <coughs> I'd call and get in the bed, and my wife says, why do you always end on the same word? I said, oh, it's what God gives me. I says, if he tells me another word, I'll give it another word. So I'm laying there in bed, and all of a sudden I hear my wife laying in the next bed, she's going, on a high, on a high, on a high. Next thing you know, she's big and dogs. And I never said it again. I never said the word again. So sometimes the word from us, if we're praying in tongues and somebody overhears you, you could be help, that could be helping somebody else to receive what they're giving. And it really worked out that way. So I got so much more to talk about with this, but it's not the time to talk about it. I wanted to make the message short tonight because we all got things to do, and, and, I, and but I do want to, I do want you to read over the, the 12th chapter of the spiritual gifts. Read them and really get to understand. Read those, read the nine gifts, and think, and think in yourself. Well, what gift can I, the Lord would want me to have? And just say, well, I want them all, Lord. Give them all to me. I want all the gifts. I'm going to tell you. It helps you. It helps you grow. And if you don't, if you don't pray in the spirit and tongues, start praying in the tongues more than English. Amen. In your home, when you're walking around your home, pray in tongues. Pray in the spirit. Go each and every room you're walking around. You pray in the spirit. You know about doing that? You're driving out all the demons, all the things that are uh, that are trying to come into your home and attack you. You know God builds a hedge around each one of us, but there's holes in that hedge. If we don't watch out, they'll get in. So that so, but by praying in the spirit to God, that drives all that out and that hedge tightens up and keeps us protected. So I believe that we should all be praying in the spirit. I believe it should be more than praying in English. I find myself praying in English and I run out of words, so I have I then I said, well let the Holy Spirit do it. And you can go on and 10, 15 minutes later your problem's still going on. But practice to do that at home. Pray in the Spirit more than you do in English. And you know you can name each and every person by praying in the Spirit, in the Spirit. It's what you put in your thinking in your head of who is this, so and as you pray for that one. You pray for that, you know, and pray in the Spirit and do it that way. So I'm going to make this short tonight because there's a lot of things, this weather's hot and things to do, so uh, I'm not going to go on any further. I just want you to understand that Seek the gifts of the Bible. But the greatest gift, seek love. Love one another. As Pastor talked about, love one another. Our love, our love, there's so many churches today, they're not loving one another. They're loving what the pastor says. It pleases their minds and, and helps his pocketbook. But I, I, love, I love the man that preaches this morning because he preaches the word, the truth. And a lot of churches aren't doing that. And that's the kind of love we need. Pray for our pastor. Pray for Larry Brown. Pray for self. Pray for them. Pray for those that are that they have a ministry.
Your love endures forever. 